And thank you for joining us. We encourage you, please make sure that you cash out. It goes with a short code, star 439 hash. And uh, with star 439 hash, you make sure you have to increase your chances of winning as you choose TV3, which is option two. It's always an encouraging time to ensure that you have money credited into your mobile money account when we do the draws. Look, I want us to patronize this, uh, especially just to uh, herald the day after. <laughs> the day after was uh, the massive event that took place in anticipation throughout the period of yesterday um, from Parliament. And uh, I don't know whether it was uh, just the way it climaxed. I don't know. You know. And so we'll see how that goes for all of us. But uh, we're here after to speak to a number of issues. And uh, yesterday on Ghana Tonight, Alfredo Kansi also had an interaction with um, Justice Atugubawa, the famous uh, former Supreme Court judge. And subsequently, a number of analysis also taking place as we have it. But today, uh, for you, our loyal viewers also, also, we encourage you to share the stream. It's always important uh, that we share the stream and, and take part in this. We're told that Parliament, uh, as it is apparently, they, ha hey, they have a number of um, actions to undertake before they ultimately wind up. Uh, and we know that even for, ideally, by the close of this month, we should have had the finance minister reading the budget um, for the year 2024, 20, uh, 25, because we all we, we we turn the cycle from the last quarter to the to the next year as well, and so uh, we're we're looking to ask questions. So we're looking forward to that. Ask uh, the members of parliament, especially those here, what they, do they intend to do about this? We need the budget to be read as well. Okay, so w what's also in it for you? What do you make of of this uh, current stalemate that we have? Is it even a stalemate? What do you think of the speaker's own um, posture yesterday? Were you satisfied? So that's a key question. We'll take you through some things. But let me just introduce Ishak Ibrahim. Uh, he's a legal practitioner, uh, not only British trained, but also, um, also right here, lecturing the law as well with the UPSA faculty. He's also here, and uh, thank you for joining us as well. Thank you very mm. much. Good morning to you. Good morning. Good, Good morning, morning uh, Mr. Ishaq Ibrahim. And then the Member of Parliament for Boim. Kofi Adams needs no introduction. He's here. And yesterday, I saw him in the video as well. I was wondering why they decided to do that. They decided not to leave the chamber. Kofi Adams, good morning to you. Good morning. We'll see how that goes. Some key questions. But let's do a recall from Parliament and then also Justice Atukuba. That we currently have a quorum to transact business, but not to take decisions. View of the current circumstances. The fact that there is a question on the composition and constitution of Parliament and having regard to the public interest and the exigencies of the state of affairs in Parliament, I will proceed to, in accordance with Standing Orders 59, adjourn the House indefinitely. That is sine die. Yeah. Well, um, <laughs> the speaker did not, uh, he referred to the fact that um, he had been served with a, a, a court order from the Supreme Court. Uh, it was one of the factors that uh, he took into account in uh, adjourning matters indefinitely. Uh, uh, so the, the effect of it uh, is that uh, uh, there's, I mean, Parliament is not uh in session is not um, operating for some time i mean until it reconvenes uh, for active work that's what it means 
And already on our social media pages, it's already buzzing. We currently see uh, Kinsley in trouble for e e Evans Ebin Samba saying that what a country we have, etc. Uh, Solomon also has joined us. Solomon also, how are you? Oh, I'm good. Great. Yeah, I'm sure you have a lot to say about this, <laughs> certainly. But um, uh, Kofi Adams, wh why did Parliament end the way it did? And what really are the ramifications, Kofi Adams? Well, thank you and good morning to your lovely uh, viewers and listeners on various platforms. And let me specifically uh, greet my constituents, the constituents of BWIM, for giving me the opportunity and doing me the honor of representing them. Uh, this morning you have asked the question, why did it end the way it ended? Certainly. Because the minority MPP yesterday chose to be so irresponsible and did what they did. And so... What do you mean by irresponsible? Well, you have been elected to be in parliament and to aid the performance of what? Government business through parliamentary processes. But on this occasion, they chose their self-interest that the desire to continue to be in majority, which they do not have at the moment, to boycott parliamentary business. And so the speaker had no other alternative but to do what he did in the circumstance. Why did the speaker, the speaker know very well, and I agree with the speaker, that the speaker took the right decision on the 17th of October, following the statement made by the then minority leader, now majority leader, Honorable Dr. Kiesel Atoba Forsen, that four members of parliament who entered parliament with a certain status have had that change and by effect they have vacated their uh, uh, position and cited a president who were an MPP member of parliament for Formina in the year 2020 suffered same in November of the year 2020, when Speaker Michael Kwe had to declare his seat vacant because he had filed as an independent candidate to contest the 2020 elections. Mm. It wasn't considered then as a future intention. It was considered based on all the laws and so available. And I've, I've taken a serious read of the Constitution and not just read the Article 97 uh, uh, one uh, uh, G and H. But you must also look at even our constitution in terms of even going to chapter 1 and looking at what? Clause 3. That deals with defense of the constitution. You see, the constitution is so clear that it says <coughs> parliament cannot legislate to have a one-party state. And so... I'm building a case that parliament cannot legislate for us to have a one-party state. You move further to look at the uh, uh, representation of the people mm. and political parties, registration of political parties. One of the first documents that is required for an organization to be registered with the Electoral Commission as a political party is their <coughs> constitution. And it is also stated in that provision that their constitution should be in tandem with the constitution of the Republic of what? Ghana. It must not be inconsistent with the constitution of the Republic of Ghana. And so to register as a political party, your constitution is the first document that is listed in the 1992 constitution as a document required to be submitted to the Electoral Commission. Then it talks about founding members that must be present in all the districts and so on and so forth. So the provisions in the political party's constitution are not mere provisions that should be kept only for the political party to work with. The political party is a public organization. That is why they are audited, they are audit audited accounts would have to be submitted to the Electoral Commission and published. And so their constitution is not just something mere for them. 
with the argument that, oh, they have to trigger. They have to. It's their party. They can do anything that they want with their General, cons this constitution. This point you're making, why is it important? And how does it, it is give meaning to the argument now? It is important to show you that when your constitution says a member who supports, who contests as independent against the party's official candidate, a member who supports or make public pronouncement in favor of another candidate other than mm. your party's uh, legally chosen candidate forfeits his membership automatically. But Kofi Adam, the question is, is it, should it be now or in the next parliament? And I'm saying that it says forfeits your membership automatically. Mm. Then the national constitution says if you leave, if you leave the party, <clears throat> That you are a member of. If you have for for feature of membership means that you cease to be a member, meaning that you have left. If you leave, you cease to be a member. And these have applied in the past. In the year 2020, it applied. All the MPP lawyers that we are hearing today speak and talk about futuristic is future. We never heard any one of them speak then. At least for today. I've heard some MPP persons who have spoken that, look, what the speaker did was right. At least I've heard some say that what the speaker did was right. So it's not all of them who are speaking today because the, the, the act have led today moving from being majority mm. to now a minority. But in 2020, that didn't happen. So many of those who are speaking that what had happened today was an illegality are doing so because it has changed the, the, the nomenclature of what? Parliament significantly that they have become a minority. So yesterday, the speaker came. Mm. The speaker gave indication that, yes, he has received some process from the Supreme Court based on the minority leader now uh, appearance before the Supreme Court. And that we have numbers to do business. But we don't have numbers to take a decision. The Supreme Court's whatever ruling or whatever they did, because they have not done any declaration, they've just uh, given some orders that we should, we should stay. A process that has already happened cannot be stayed. So you can only, you were asking Parliament to reverse what is this that they have already what, done. And how will Parliament reverse what they have done? It is through a decision. Mm. So in the thinking of Mr. Speaker, we did not have numbers to take decision on a matter we have already decided. But we could have had the other side also being there. And then you have the... Quorum. But they were not there. If they were not there, how do you have a quorum Why for were decision? They not there? Well, ask them. Did their leadership I'm saying, meet ask the them. They have a rep on this platform. <laughs> ask them. Ask him. Why they chose not to be there? Because they came in. Earlier, we were sitting together. I had Honorable Obi Amwa sit behind me mm. for a very long time. Why they left, only God knows. Their leadership, the minority leader, Alexander Afenyo Makin. You say you shouldn't refer the to The minority you chief whip, Anon Dompre. The deputy minority leader, <coughs> Patricia Pia uh, Ajay. All the minority side were present in the meeting with Mr. Speaker at Concliffe. So why they chose to boycott the sitting, they alone can answer. And so according to Mr. Speaker, he did not have the numbers mm. to take a decision because the, there's a constitutional provision. Article 104 is clear that to take a decision, you need more than half of the total number of MPs or members of parliament that we have. And we didn't have that number yesterday when the speaker was presiding to take a decision. So the best thing to do is to adjourn Sinedia. And well, we don't know when we'll be called. Unless a matter that is so urgent comes up and the speaker so considers it after meeting with the leadership, we cannot be recalled anytime soon. If they chose to go the route of 15% of the membership petitioning Mr. Speaker, that gives us 14 days to be able to recall Parliament. 14 days? 14 days. Because when you put in your petition, 
the speaker has seven days within which to indicate within the next seven days when parliament will be recalled. That gives it 14 days. I see. If we are going to be recalled through a normal process and not anything agent that has happened, members of parliament need 14 days notice. It is only when, Mr. Speaker, there is an agent matter, very agent matter, that it is within three days that notice is given to members for them. In to the last, next line of question, then we'll ask what really are the, the options that are available now? At what point in time can we have the members <clears throat> called in on any state of emergency or on agency, so to speak? Uh, now, we've also been joined by uh, one of the key professors in the Department of um, uh, Political Science and History. Uh, the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, and um, Dr. Kwesi Amache Boatin is joining us. Good morning to you. Have you turned prof yet, sir? Uh, good morning, uh, and thanks for having me. Okay. Uh, no. All right. In fact, uh, yeah. Okay, so so we'll be with you. And Solo one also to you. I've already introduced yeah, you, yeah, haven't I? Now, now, now uh, Mr. Ishak, yes. you take a look at what transpired yesterday. Yes. The, the position of um the caucus of the mpp in yes. parliament yes and then the actions that they took they should have stayed in the house okay mr ishak um i think the decision they made to stay out of parliament was the right decision you think so yes it was actually in the national interest here is the case a court has made a legitimate decision by telling the speaker that they have given you stay of execution what that simple means is that everything is frozen and it has to go back to the status quo. But you got the minority, because I believe if you interpret the constitution very well, I will come the minority? To that. The minority is the NDC caucus. If you interpret the constitution well, you cannot have something that has never been given to you legitimately. I will come to explain that. So if you have such Mr. Ishak, let's deal with this. Let's deal with um, it. Let, let, let's, okay. let's deal with something. Okay. There, there was a pronouncement the last week. Yes. The speaker, Albert yes. Bagbane, following yes. that pronouncement, yeah then gave everyone, yes. all and sundry, all stakeholders, yes. a certain implication. Yes. And I, I'm told you're a lecturer, right? Yes. And so it implies. What I'm saying is that the decision made by... So how by... come you as a law lecturer describing okay. one side of the house a yes. minority okay. when we know that there's a standing <laughs> pronouncement that has been made by the Speaker yes. of Ghana's Parliament? Let me explain. The pronouncement made by the Speaker of Ghana Parliament was unlawful. It was based on unlawful <coughs> power grab from the court themselves. If you look at Article 99, Clause 1, sub Clause 8, it's very, very clear over there. Let's look at Article 99. It's here. Should I read it for you? Uh, oh, you want it, to, yes, you, you can want read to... it for me. But, uh, okay, you want to re uh, reference let me, it yourself. Let me read it, okay. yes. So Article 99, it says, The High Court shall have jurisdiction to hear and determine any question whether a person has been validly elected as a member of parliament or the seat of a member has become vacant. The constitution writer reserved this for only the high court and no other body. Now, some people argue that the speaker was right because of Article 110. <clears throat> if you look at what Article 110, the power given to Parliament of Ghana is procedure, is to determine procedure through their standing orders. Now, this is a general provision because it says procedure. But if you look at Article 99, Clause 1, Sub Clause A, it says that the power to determine vacancy in Parliament is reserved for what? For only the High Court. So now, people think there is conflict here, but there's no conflict. For you to read the Constitution proper, you have to input what we call principles. And th that's when you go to legal theory. There is a legal theory by uh, Professor Hart, who talks about open texture of legal documents. And there's also legal theory advanced by Professor Duokin. That talks about the fact that there has never been gaps in law. There are principles for you to always fill the gaps. So here, if you look at these two articles, you tend to think it's conflict, but it's not. Because we have a principle of constitutional law, we call it for short, lex specialist rules, or uh, generalist specialist de regard. 
Simple means that when there is a specific provision and there is a general provision, the specific provision takes precedence over a general provision. So if power has specifically been given to the High Court by the Constitution under Article 99, and there's a general power given to Parliament under Article 110, the specific provision, as I've just explained, take precedence over the general provision. So that was a power grab. You are the lawyer. That you was the a power lawyer. grab. So Mr. the Speaker Ishak, did so not does have it the right. That because and the next minute because, was the because at Article 99, it says yes. that the High Court shall have jurisdiction to hear yes. and determine any question whether a person has been validly elected or not, etc. But yes. in Parliament last or, week, in Parliament last week yes. there, was, there was no order from any High Court at all. It was no. a, a sitting mm. member of Parliament yes. who made a statement. Yes. Subsequently, the yes. Speaker of Ghana's Parliament, yes. solely appointed and also backed by the yes. same constitution, okay. made a determination yes. and a ruling. And how does that conflict with any provision in 99. Let me explain to you. Um, you see, when you take this particular thing to court, if a court is going to look at it, the court is going to look at the effect of it, regardless of whatever name is placed on it, that it's information, it's a ruling, whatever name it, people use to describe it, the court will look at the consequences of it. Uh, in other words, if it quacks like a duck, it is a duck. It doesn't matter whether it is a chicken or not. If a chicken quacks like a duck, English people say it is a duck. That will be the principle the court will apply. What is the effect of it? The effect of it is to remove four members of parliament who have been legitimately elected by their constituency. It is that basis that the NDC is now calling themselves majority. So it has legal consequences. So it doesn't matter whether the information Lawyer you give Ishaq, or not. All of us saw the proceedings. The speaker yes. made a ruling. It's not the basis for which ever said, you are attributing. Is the speaker yes. of Ghana's said, parliament who made a ruling? The consequences of it. So if the ruling has a consequences, especially assuming the powers of the high court, that is what exactly what we are talking about. So you don't have the right to decide. Yes, look at Article 97. It's very clear that it uses what we call an imperative language. It look at Article 99, you see the imperative language. It says, shall, a member of parliament shall vacate his seat in parliament. Then when you come to the G, it gives various options as if you cross carpet to, the other, uh, to other political parties or if he seeks to remain in parliament as an independent. Now, two rival meaning has been put into it. Some people said it is, uh, what did they call it, uh, is, they are talking about the future parliament. Others claim that it is the current parliament. I believe this provision was referring to the fact that if you seek to remain in this current parliament as independent, so it doesn't affect these people. But some people say it affects it. So it gives rise to an interpretation issue. And when you look at uh, the case of uh, Special Tribunal, ex parte Akosa, the Supreme Court was very clear. That if certain, if they, they, they give four situations in which you must come for an interpretation. So this case should have been sent to the high court. Then the high court will stay the case and make a referral to the Supreme Court for an interpretation. And if you look at ex parte Acosta, for example, uh, it says one, that you must make a referral for an interpretation. One, if ways or provisions are unclear, or ambiguous. Two, rather meanings have been placed by persons on the ways of any provision of the 1902 constitution. So I will stop here, but the other two continue. The most relevant one is, is, what, is, is two. Is, is, is what in ex parte So you are saying that um, yes. the Supreme Court was wrong. And even Michael Quay in 2020. So what are you saying? I said that Professor Michael Quay, was he wrong? No, 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 please, please, please. Professor, no, Professor Michael Quay, no, was he wrong? Not, what I'm saying is that the initial decision to remove them should have gone to the high court. But having overreached your power, it is right for you to go to where the, the, the Supreme Court 
for the enforcement of the constitution. So the minority leader, the, let me come. I am the one talking. The minority leader, you are not going to mislead me into reading anything. The, the enforcement of the constitution is reserved for the Supreme So let me ask you that. Are you okay. saying that in 2020, yes. Professor yes. Michael Kwe, a distinguished professor, he was very wrong. I'm very consistent about that. He was wrong. He overreached his powers by taking powers of the High Court and also taking some powers of interpretation. And in your argument, the, the current speaker too is wrong. He's wrong. Point. And it's illogical to say that since Professor McQuay was wrong, we have to be consistently wrong. That is illogical. And as you said, I remember you speaking earlier. You were saying that why was the MPP members not talking about it? But the enforcement of the constitution is not only on MPP, it's on every Ghanaian. Look at Article 2. It places a burden on every Ghanaian to enforce the constitution. So if you do that, uh, the minority, I mean, the um, um, Afghanian marking would then go to the Supreme Court for the enforcement of the constitution. He's not only enforcing Article 99, the whole constitution being overreached by the Speaker of Parliament. It's why he's going there. So I didn't say the Supreme Court is wrong. And the Supreme Court is right to order that particular state. Some people have argued very strangely that the Supreme Court does not even have the power to order for a state because it is not a court ruling. What are they talking about? If you look at the common law, uh, and I've watched, uh, uh, what do they call it, uh, the former justice of the Supreme Court. Mr. Shaq, you have two minutes to wrap up. Okay. I've watched the former justice of the Supreme Court, um, uh, Professor Achikuba. What did he say? He said, yes, strict legality suggests that it's usually a court order that the order stay. But modern trends suggest that it is not only a court order. Law can now be very flexible. And if you look at the case of Camparo versus Dickman, as part of the common law, the court says that superior courts can always extend law, extension by analogy. So if something is similar to a court decision, then the Supreme Court is right to extend it by analogy. Point made. Yes. So, look, and watching all this and what has transpired, it will mean that we seem to be at a crossroad. Solo. No, I mean, one of the things that uh, the lawyers in this country, together with the judiciary, has succeeded in inflicting on the people of this country is to confuse all of us. Why? Why do you say they that? They have damaged every Ghanaian. Now you don't know which is which. The same letters, lettering them, the same constitution, written black and white, yet people are coming with all sort of wild interpretations. You mean, you, you think we are going just helter-skelter? Absolutely. I mean, I'm very surprised with what my brother Ishaq Ibrahim is doing this morning. I was in the MPP in 2020. I never heard him say that the speaker's ruling was wrong. He never said it anyway. Yet today, conveniently, he's saying that he disagreed with Ma Michael Quay. That cannot be. When the general secretary of a political party writes, what it means is that the party, that is the party's position. Party says the moment you declare that intention of contesting as an independent candidate, you are not part of them. Which I agree. General secretary writes to the speaker, speaker act on it and gives a ruling. By virtue of that, the man is taken out of parliament. Someone just told me this morning that the karma that used to work was karma slow. Now we have karma fast. <laughs> Who told you that? Oh, and my old lady said this karma is too fast. <laughs> I mean, just four years ago, people that are arguing, that are running to the Supreme Court, told us that this was the position which was affirmed by the Speaker of Parliament. And the same facts, same circumstance, and even the same personality, character involved. The same people have come back and telling us that, oh, that is not the case. Looking straight into the faces of you and I and insulting our intelligence. Why must we allow that to happen? What are you saying? That it, the MPP, it's a mix of double standards? The actions of the MPP is just insulting the intelligence of Ghanaians. Take it from me. How can you say it that? It is total insult. That you just said yesterday that uh, someone left your party to contest as an independent candidate and by virtue of that must be cleared from parliament, which, was, which decision was taken that you have to be cleared from parliament, is today telling us that that cannot be the case. And you think it's not an insult into our intelligence? Can any MPP member confidently tell me that now they consider Cynthia Morrison as part of the MPP? I don't understand. What do you mean by that uh, pronouncement? 
it is automatic. Cynthia Morrison is no more a member of the MPP. Kwajo Asante is no more a member of the MPP. By virtue of the yes. rules they've set Absolutely. for themselves. So, 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 where, I don't, look, don't allow anybody to bring legal technicalities to confuse you. If the constitution was meant for only lawyers, then they shouldn't be selling to ordinary people. <laughs> if the constitution, because selling a constitution to me means you are written in simple language. Why do we make this so difficult? So, so no, are you saying that the Supreme Court, yeah. as well as the other individuals, the protagonists yeah. or the antagonists in all the story, yeah. whether it's Afenio Markin, the bulk of the MPP caucus, etc., yeah. are not reading the mood of their supporters in the country? No, they are only deceiving them. Deceiving? Yes, giving them falsehood. It's falsehood. Look, this was the same speaker. I mean, come to think of it, Roland. In less in 2020, when we went to the polls, Daniel gave the NDC 137, MPP 137, that was the case. Since when this, the mathematics told you that 137 is greater than 137? So it means we didn't have a majority parliament and we didn't have a minority parliament. It was equal. It took the same speaker to say that the independent candidates had told everyone that he was going to do business with the majority, uh, the MPP, and by virtue of that, uh, the MPP became the majority. Did we not live with it? And if today the speaker is telling you that, hey, by virtue of what happened, four seats are vacant, we have been told that this speaker cannot be right. I agree with the speaker that those seats, four seats, must be declared vacant. Indeed, they are vacant. This futuristic thing that is being introduced here, where is it coming from? That the man has declared that he's contested as an independent candidate. He wants to go to Parliament. He say, uh, he, he used to be with the MPP, so he must declare the seat uh, vacant. Is that what they are telling us? But those of us with the movement for change, we are so happy. We are awaiting the decision from the Supreme Court. You know why? One of the propaganda going around is that when Mr. Lanchamanti wins as the president, he will find it very difficult getting members. Well, you know you have to appoint majority of your ministers, or uh, yes, majority from Parliament. We have said we intend to appoint 40 ministers, meaning 21 has to come from parliament. Now, the decision, if the Supreme Court rules that, hey, if you go to parliament, you can just vacate your seat and wait for the next time. All that we will do that when we come, we appoint 21 ministers, we ask them to vacate your seat and go as independent. Really? Oh, yes, yes that is, that, it could be a possibility. Already, Alan Chiamatti is thinking that? No, already, I'm thinking that. I'm so happy with what is happening. So, so happy. You understand? So. Let truth be truth. Let principles be principles. If it was white yesterday, don't come and tell us that it's black today and get people to support you. And I believe that those that are pushing this agenda are not helping the cause of this country. The MPP must be told in the face that what they are doing is drawing us back into the old days of our politics. And that their own constitution has given them out. And I'm very happy to hear or learn that those independent candidates are standing on their ground to say, we are not backing down and that we are going as independent candidates. Why did we get here must be our concern. This mafioso business of internal politics. Mafioso? Mafioso has been crumpled down in parliament. Mafioso. This person is not in our clique. Let's do everything possible to get the person out. Treat the person anyhow. It's what is playing out. It has to be a useful lesson to all, both political parties, all political parties, associations, and so on and so forth, that when you are treating any of your members, mm. treat them according to the laws and not because the person does not follow your politics mm. or that politics. Mm. And by so doing, we will not be experiencing some of these situations. Mm. So I'm happy. All right. Um, Dr. Kwesi Amachi Boating, critical to all this, especially with not only your area of study, Having contributed to national discourse, not only politics, governance, etc., do you think that what is happening, even though there's a key subject of interpretation of law which will take us forward in the public domain, we're leading um, our citizens and the rest of the voters to have a belief that we cannot be trusted, that we're people of double standards. What is good yesterday or was good yesterday is not good today. Uh, once again, thanks for having me. I don't think we are there yet. The Supreme Court is here to speak to the issue authoritatively. Uh, we are actually in 
you know, an interesting time, simply because of the fact that uh, people want to have their way all the time. I'm not surprised about that because basically politics is also driven by interest. And, and, and these interests, especially when they come from political actors, uh, political parties, uh, independent uh, politicians, these, their interests need not necessarily be that of uh, the country, the state. Mm. And, and, and we are all witnesses of uh, what, what, what is happening here. There's, there's this point that the, the gentleman who just spoke, you know, uh, related to. And it's got to do with the need for the legal instrument to generate stability. The legal instrument, the constitution. Basically, they are supposed to ensure stability. And so they sort of uh, encircle politics, they are the framework in the context of which politics unfold. And they are supposed to ensure stability. With the politics, you have individual actors moving up and down, trying to you know, have their own way, at times aligning themselves to the national interest. But at the end of the day, it is the legal instruments that ensure stability. Because of that, there are two variables that we believe should not be admitted into, you know, their meanings. One of them has got to do with time. You know, just like the gentleman said, when, if the uh, movement for change were to come into office, then they will simply invoke uh, this understanding, the futuristic interpretation of uh, Article 79, 1G and H. That, look, these guys, <laughs> have their minds on moving out of their parties, although it's not time for the Electoral Commission to, you know, facilitate their, uh, if you like, um, the, I mean, documentation of their intention. Mm. But they still have got that intention. So now those who are admitting intent, intentions, into the analysis of those provisions are admitting motives. And motives, intentions, they are variable. The moment you do that, you introduce biases into your operations. And the moment you, you, you allow biases to come in, forget about it. We say you, you, you are political. You, you are political. And then time to vary. You know, time varies. So that uh, if this thing uh, is happening at this material moment in time, we've got only two months to the elections because of that, you know, what they are saying, you know, it is fused with this, their motives. Uh, what we are saying is that, yes, they have taken forms, they have failed, mm. but it does not necessarily affect their current uh, situation, their locals, and for that matter, it's futuristic. Look, that is also a variable you are introducing into the analysis. That particular provision will mean one thing today, it will mean a different thing tomorrow, and then it will be a mess. So generally, we, it is good we are all waiting for the Supreme Court mm. to, 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 to speak. And, and they should be the final body that will have to act to ensure that our system is stable, our system is not demonstrating confusion, okay. and that we know what we are doing. Mm. So, Mr. Adams, where do we go from here? What, when can we say that we need you back in parliament under what circumstances because um, if we can put the 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 actions or the tax that we think is a it's, it's needed to be done by the parliament before it winds up for example we have the budget there's the airline that the president promised will be worked on and we know that it's being suspended by way of the implementation in in the first place etc how how do we get you people back well what we really have is not a full budget because uh, this is an election year and a new government will be taking over, which I'm very convinced that is going to be a John Mahama uh, administration. So what we do have is provided for, I think, in Article 180 of the Constitution uh, that says where it appears the, that's expenditure in advance of what? Appropriation. Um, because it's not going to be possible for appropriation to come into effect. Mm. So 
some provision, some arrangement is made for the first three months or until such time when the Appropriation Act would have been passed. So it's not going to be a full budget that goes through all the processes and stages of referrals to the committees. The various sector committees will have to go and deliberate and hear the uh, various agencies under them. We are not going to do that. So it is just for expenditure in advance of what? Appropriation. And that is by a resolution. And that doesn't take any long time. So we necessarily will be recalled, I'm sure, to perform this business. But all other business, we should forget it. I don't think that is going to happen. Because even the government itself had no interest. This uh, ally that allow mining in forest reserves and then what have you, that they told us they were prepared and ready to bring before the House immediately uh, Parliament resume. We resumed on the 15th. But no such thing has come. So if they were interested, in any case, that the Attorney General advised that they should go through the long process of coming to lay the document, Parliament considering it, making the necessary referral, is sitting in Parliament for 21 sitting days, that that's what they wanted. They should have immediately brought it in on the 15th. But that hasn't happened. It hasn't happened. Many of us have given indication that we don't need to take it through the 21 sitting day. It's possible mm -hmm. just to do this without uh, uh, recourse to the 21 sitting day. But I don't see government desire. Because if they were so desirous, their members, the minority, would not have been boycotting parliamentary activity as they did yesterday. They would have joined us so as to be able to take decisions. And I repeat, parliament don't just work anyhow. Parliament works through decision-taking processes. When we pass the law on these narcotics and someone took an aspect of it to the Supreme Court mm. and the Supreme Court made a pronouncement, Parliament went through the various processes and then got that part amended. A new LI was laid. Mm. It was referred to appropriate uh, committees. They worked on it, brought it back to Parliament, and it was passed. Mm. It is only now that the regulation is being worked on. We go through decisions. You don't just say because the court have said. So that is it. Especially when the action you sought to stay has already happened. Because what you were seeking this, to stay the speaker on, the speaker had already made those pronouncements. The seats have become vacant. The MPP have become minority. The NDC have become a majority. If anything has to be done, it has to be done through a decision. And the Constitution is so clear about the numbers you need for a decision. We did not have that yesterday. And the Speaker did the right thing by adjourning did the, the right House. Thing. He did the right thing. Okay. He did the right thing. Both on the 17th, his ruling, mm. and also yesterday, the adjournment. Could we have had a possibility where they refrain from the legal practitioners, the luminaries, if we have juries in Ghana also, we can also include them that we need there to respect uh, our own principles and what is enshrined in our constitution by the concept of the separation of powers. And so the expectation that the speaker, um, if we had that quorum that we needed, could have said that, well, I I'm, I'm defying the orders of the Supreme Court. And that going by my standing, what, what, was that, did they come up in your discussions privately as a caucus or on both sides? Because yesterday we saw that both, both sides were all interacting. Well, that is why I was saying that Parliament will have to take a decision. Unfortunately, we did not have the numbers to do so. I if we had the that. numbers. I'm saying that, wait, was that conversation something that came up? Well, it, it was part of the conversations that members of Parliament were having. And clearly so, even the Supreme Court itself made nonsense of the, own, the, the law and the practices that we have known all this while. And many persons have told them in the face that they got it wrong. How would anybody appear before you on an ex parte motion? And in even giving the injunction, assuming without admitting that you had even jurisdiction to hear the matter, and you give the, the, the injunction for perpetuity until the matter is determined. When it, you same people have sat in law lecture rooms and taught your student that in such a situation, you give only 10 days. By which time, 
you will go through notice and get them to appear. The Supreme Court, that should be abiding by all these practices, now gets to the court and does something else. All right. And they think that we should just sit around and then uh, accept yes, them like that. Yesterday, um, there were letters in the public domain that said some sections of workers of parliament had leaked um, is it, or photocopied sections. Was it the Hansard? Yeah. Or, well, and then also we're told um, others also let your colleague into the house. That's true. That's a not done prayer. That's true. I'm told you were the one at the gate at that's, the time. That's, you allowed him. <laughs> so, you so, see, so truth, clarify some of those ones. First, the, truth is first that, the workers, and, uh, and, and there's a, a secular that said they should be suspended or investigated or something like that. When Parliament sits, the minutes, let me call it minutes for the understanding of ordinary uh, persons, is captured. And by the next sitting, you will then go through a process to approve what we call as the votes and proceedings of the previous sitting. So the 17th, uh, that starts the 17th October sitting, the votes and proceedings were yet to be approved by the House. You mean officially? Officially. We did so only yesterday. And corrections were made because it is somebody's report. So members who did business will have to correct what is captured. So yesterday, for example, if you go to page 9, a lot, a lot of co two corrections were made there. Honorable Roxon Dafia Mepo drew the attention of Mr. Speaker that the statement made by the then minority leader on the 15th was not just alleged. They were matters of fact that those members have mm -hmm. filed to contest in the positions so described. So it was not alleged. Then Honorable Sosu also corrected the, a report that says majority in inverted commerce. Uh, majority caucus staged a workout, and that is not a majority that staged a workout. At the time they worked out, they were a minority based on the speaker's ruling. That correction was also accepted and captured. The speaker directed that they should go and check the, the, the answers and check the details whether the stage workout happened before his ruling or after his ruling. If it was after his ruling, then Honorable Susu was right, and that must be corrected to minority caucus staged a workout. So yesterday it was corrected. If you photocopy this, and it's so submitted to a court, you have presented an information that is false. So what happened was for someone to have photocopied the answer, and that is Dito Dito report, even when you cough, the official report captures it. If you say, yeah, yeah, the official report captures it. To have photocopied that and made it available for someone to go and litigate when officially we haven't even approved it yet was something that is unparliamentary, that was illegal. And that so you're saying they, they have to be sanctioned? Well, of course, they are going through the process. The, okay. They are going through the process. On the issue of another prayer, there was a secular that... We are, not, we, we are not to enter Parliament until 8 a.m. when the doors shall be open to all of us. These are the processes. Our gas were not allowed and so on and so forth. Only to realize that the doors were opened for another prayer. The minority chief we, to go in there because they knew themselves that they were not a majority and they were a minority. So he was trying to smuggle himself in and to capture a certain zone. Unfortunately, that did not materialize. We insisted... And finally, they got him out from the, from the chamber door where we, were, where we were sitting. But he entered illegally because the circular was very clear that the doors shall be opened okay. at 8. But he entered long before mm. 8 a.m. And mm. that is wrong. That is unlawful. That is not right. And again, brought a lot of his supporters from his constituency who were wearing his T-shirts so all over. I didn't, know, that or what, I didn't that... know what they were coming there to do. Well, and they go out saying that, oh, they are law-abiding, you are law-abiding, and you carried your people there to come and do what? To come and sit in the chambers, to come and intimidate people, to intimidate me? Do I look like someone who can be intimidated? No. Mr. Ishak, yes. let's clarify the issue about yeah. who should be called majority, okay. minority. And okay. because already in the hands that I'm, I'm hearing quotes, <laughs> now yeah. I'm seeing it, right? Quotes. Okay. Some, uh, some say they are majority. Please 
Okay. Uh, what, how should we be making reference? I think okay. you mark it when he's called and the journalist refers to him because we cover parliament. So as parliamentary yeah. correspondents, we cover proceedings of parliament. Yeah. And so thereof, we know that it is implied. So when we are doing our ethical reporting, yes. then we do the appro appropriate okay. calling. Yes. So, Th thank you very much. Mm -hmm. um, before I touch that briefly, I just want to mention uh, the sentiment. Him, eh? No, no, I'm not blasting him. I don't yeah, usually. I, I don't blast him. The sentiment that he had just mentioned that lawyers sometimes confuse them. The, the truth is that law is a complex enterprise. Uh, students of law will tell you, even up to now, since time immemorial, we've not been able to find acceptable definition of law. Because the way law is, your definition depends on where you stand. Feminists will define uh, law from positivists, different from natural lawyer, and different from Marxists. It is for this reason that we decide, every jurisdiction, not just Ghana, that the base brains in the law will be sent to what? The Supreme Court. And the Constitution writer said, as you said, separation of powers and the rule of law. That's where our Constitution is based. And for that is the very reason why we said our base brains is the Supreme Court. And that when it comes to interpretation of the law, they will have the final say. And here is a case the Supreme Court has partially spoken. They have not dealt with the interpretation, but they have been giving us interim orders. And here is a case a lawmaker here says that they have to sit down and make a decision on an order that has been given. No, you don't have to make decision over there. The order is clear. The constitution is clear. The Supreme Court, court would have the last say. The Supreme Court has spoken no, by no, making... The Supreme Court has spoken by making an interim order that the status quo must be preserved. So I was expecting the speaker to strictly even communicate to you informally that he has accepted what the court ruling is. And you ought to go and take your rightful place and the majority will go and sit there. The question you ask is, we are now confused because the NDCs are claiming they are the majority. The MPP are claiming they are the majority. What, do, what would be the right terminology to refer to each? The, the law is very clear. The pronouncement that the speaker has made, I believe it doesn't matter whether it was a pronouncement, it was a ruling, whatever it is. Look at the effect of it. If it quacks like a duck, as I said, English people will say, it is a duck. So who has the power? When there is a dispute, who has the power to make the decision? The Constitution have reserved it to the High Court. So it was illegal power grab. And you cannot benefit from illegality. It's very clear. If you get something through illegality, it's not yours. The, the law, the Which common law, law has always who maintained has, that. Has no, please. If you it's have title, grabbed please. something, if you been. cannot be a owner, you've gotten something through illegality. Go and chase somebody out of their house today and remain over there and say it is your house. Of course, it has illegal Does power grab. Does it mean grab. that the speaker acted illegally? Yes. The speaker overreached. The speaker did not stay within his power, as I said. Really? It is the high court. The, the 19, I mean, Article 99 is very clear that the, if there's a dispute, for example, so this, this Article 97 is saying that you shall vacate. There's a dispute here. Those people are saying it doesn't apply to them. And the constitution says if there is a dispute, the high court shall decide, not the speaker. You cannot use a general power under Article 110 to decide because it has specifically been given to the high court. So if you overreach, and then the, 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 the minority, the Afenio Marking, have gone for the enforcement of the constitution under Article 110, and the court has made 130. And the court has made an interim order. And the interim order is that the status quo will preserve mm. until the matter is determined. So they will have the last say. You people are confusing. You people, you people are. So you see, you are confusing it with an injunction. You are confusing it with an injunction. An injunction is where they put 10 days period. Now, what is this? This particular one, you can go to court. The speaker can go to court immediately and ask it to be set aside. Do you understand that? The response will be the speaker, if you think the decision is wrong, was to send your lawyers to set it aside. 
okay. you don't have to wait for 10 days. So for me, the MPP remains a majority because this was par <clears throat> illegal power grab. And you cannot benefit from illegality. Every jurisdiction is wrong. So it wasn't his decision. Right. Illegal power grab. The NDPP remains the majority caucus. All right. So look, before I come to you, let me just uh, have a last word from because he has to go for lectures and go and do very important work for for KNUSD. Doc, but you, you are not on strike, right? That is serious. Everybody, everybody. Yeah. Uh, are you referring to me as an yeah, individual? You tag is on strike, so I was correcting them that KNUSD is not on strike. Oh, you tag is on strike. You tag is on strike. Okay, then you have more time. Do you teach? Okay, you have more time. Um, just just in four minutes. Um, beyond the issues of the law. How do we make sure that we create the right sort of atmosphere, cohesion, and bring everybody on board? Because this is happening just in the run-up to the election. Well, this is a difficult issue. It's a very difficult issue because uh, whether we like it or not, we can't do away with the law and then its implications. You know, our actions are, and inactions will have to be uh, sort of uh, certified by the legal instruments, whether uh, consciously or unconsciously, formally or informally. So we, we can't do away with the law. It is up to us, you know, uh, uh, to, to, to make things smooth for us. When I look at politics in, say, the UK and then politics in the United States, then you realize that the UK, they, 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 they are also, I mean, <laughs> nobody can challenge the fact that they are a democracy, a constitutional democracy for that matter. But they look at the way they go about their things, when many of their legal instruments are by conventions and, and they all stay within the line. You don't, you don't see them getting into protracted, uh, uh, I mean, uh, conflict about, you know, basic issues. So I think it, it is coming from us as a people and our understanding of what should be our priorities and how we should go about achieving them. Some of the things you mentioned, you know, what, what business do we have going to parliament? Mm -hmm. What exactly should parliament be addressing itself to? Whether we like it or not, parliament is structured the way it's structured. So when matters of this nature come up, then the structure has been sort of affected in one or another way. And so not until we have the proper acceptable structure in place, uh, the business of parliament will definitely wait. It, 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 it won't take place. I think it, it is a very difficult issue how we can get things moving for us smoothly. It should come from us. Okay. All right. Thank you very much for joining us, and uh, we're grateful. Dr. Kwesi Amache Boateng with the KNUST, uh, with uh, the Department of Political Science and History. But, Solo, so right now, where do we go from this? How do we build consensus? Uh, I believe that uh, that must be the, the, the crying call of every Ghanaian. I mean, as we speak, inflation is still at 21.5%. Water turbidity is still at 14%. Uh, fuel prices are hovering around 14.99 a liter. People are falling below the poverty lines. And these are the, what must preoccupy parliament and not the usual gymnastics, I understand. Because yesterday, the reason why more people or most people took interest in what was going to happen was that people thought they were going to fight. And Ghanaians were interested in them fighting. Rather than their core mandate of making laws for all of us. So consensus building must be the order of the day. Putting the nation first. This business of winner takes all must be taken out of our politics. It is what is underpinning all this. One political party comes to power and every position, all the goodies in this country must go to their political party members. It is not good for this country. And that's why there seems to be so much tension in, in, in this country. I believe that the speaker will call them back immediately. As he said, the budget has to be passed for 2025. Uh, I believe that the LI 2462 has to be revoked immediately. If they fail to revoke it, Alan Chamante will come and revoke it immediately. He, he ascends to the tr throne of presidency. And going forward, let principles lead us. Parliament must be moving away gradually from this whip system so that we send people to Parliament. For instance, my constituency who can't quit out. 
My parliamentary... Uh, my... Who is your MP there? That one, you might. I don't remember the last time. I thought she... she's your friend, though. Oh, she never organizes any program. Do you I, mean... I said I thought she's your friend. I, she used to. Now, <laughs> <laughs> the point is that she never takes my opinion to go and represent me in parliament. As a constituent. As a constituent. You understand? Parliamentarians don't come back to us to listen to us as to what and or how we want this country to be run. They go there and take their own decisions. And it's not helping anyone. You understand? You are representing the entire constituency. So what is happening? Yesterday, one I listened to Ahmed Ibrahim, he says there wasn't any consensus, even among the leadership. If the leadership, you are not agreeing, how about, how about the, the downtrodden, the full soldiers? Then there will be confusion anywhere. Meanwhile, your job is to represent the interests of this country. So who is representing the interests of Ghana in parliament? Let us begin to be nationalistic mm. and go for what to help this country to right. reduce poverty. For where we are now, it's no good for all of us. And that is why I recommend to you that in election 2024, go there and vote massively for Alan. You have to add that. Eh? It's very important because, you see, we, we will have a situation where the president will be an independent president, majority coming from different party, minority coming Who from different party. Who will be the independent president? Who is that? That's Alan Chamate. Okay. And that's why I'm saying that the speak up, uh, the, the chief justice together with the, uh, the, the Supreme Court judges must take this ruling very serious, bearing in mind what is ahead of us, the likelihood of an independent candidate becoming president and how he plays <laughs> in this whole equation. That must guide them so that we do not have to come back 2025 for anybody to tell us that because I am in this party when you are given a ministerial so position. You are very controversial. Some of the pronouncements you are making, independent candidate in Ghana, what, what is wrong with that? I'm Don't it will it happen if you look at the history? But you suck. There is no history here. We are going to vote question. from it. It was a no, no, but, from but Roland, I'm very surprised that you are thinking <laughs> no, that. No, 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 please don't no, take me. I, I, I am very so surprised. Saw, please, no, no, kindly no, no, withdraw that aspect for me because you are creating a I've withdrawn it. Please, I'm very happy. I'm very happy that you have withdrawn it. Okay, just just in three minutes. Yeah. Just in three. You wanted to ask him. You add that. So I I want to also ask you. So at the end of the day, what is the consensus among you MPs, both sides? that you have one of your colleagues go independent or move away from the party? Because we have a number of instances already. Um, I have a comment that's saying that the independent candidate for Suhum yeah. is on Onuya, saying that he was removed from was the MPP removed platform. From the platform. Pl MPP exactly. platform. So, so, um, I think Tony just sent it to me. And exactly. then he said that when the speaker made the ruling last week, I know prayer added him, but that's what he's claiming. So uh, what's the consensus so, among you so people? So clearly, they, the then majority, uh, understood clearly and were applying their own party constitution that talks about for feature of membership. And that is why when those persons gave their indication that they were going to go independent. The chief whip, who manages oh, okay. Okay. the caucus, decided... Which is yeah, another So he press, was just doing his work. Doing his work to remove them from the caucus platform, meaning they actually cease to be part and parcel of them. When you remove a member from the caucus platform based on his declaration that he was going independent, now you have applied this only for you to turn around and say that, oh, no, they are, part of, they are part of you. You see the double standards that we are talking about. And they sit and talk with straight face as if they are not engaging in double standards. Look, the constitution of the new patriotic party itself is so clear on the forfeiture of what? Membership. It's so clear. And it's in tandem with the ruling of both Speaker Okwe and Speaker Bagbin. And Speaker Bagbin even elucidated it more when he said, this whole futuristic thing, if the person goes and contests as independent and wins and enters parliament, where is the punishment going to come in again? So the only way the person can suffer a punishment is now when the shift is observed based on the notice of polls. Is that a consensus among you current members of parliament and even past? Well, if it isn't a consensus, the chief whip of the then majority, now minority, Honorable and Odenpre, would not have removed the Suhum MP and the other one from their caucus platform. He removed them because he, and he kept the independent because he knows that he has become a member of their party. Which is the Formina? The Formina. Okay. He kept him in there because he admits that he has become a member and remove the others because he thinks they have lost their membership. So you see what it is that they were doing? 
So everything they did, and which is blowing out now, is in tandem with the, the decision, the view of Mr. Speaker. And yesterday, they made it even worse when they took pictures of them and blew it out there. That, oh, they have been sorted out. You mean and Cynthia Morrison? Cynthia Morrison. And the worst part was to add that, oh, she's been given 15 uh, uh, million, 15 million, uh, 15 million mm. to, to, to step down. And that's why they were all smiling. Can you imagine? All right. You went in there, did all the things that you, to undermine her, just like the way you undermine Alan and Co. And then now, to make matters worse, you are saying you, you bought them out of their content. They when undermine Alan? You are in this cinema. How do you know? Oh, did but, they of course, Alan? but of course, oh, we, okay, so but, but that was public, that was public knowledge. That was public the knowledge that so. the, 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 the president and all did put every machinery in place right. to undermine Lawyer, lawyer Ishak, yeah. I have this one from um, Ambassador Sampi Yali. He says, we all accept the, super the supremacy of our courts. Yeah. What about if we have uh, raw, naked partisan judges using their office to occasion injustice? Who watches the watchman? Okay. So it's, it's just a comment. And I have, um, I think Eduji did send me a message. So let me just also... Um, read that one i'll read one more but this one also says it says is the mpp lawyer insisting that um the high court it, it is the high court that declares seats vacant if that is the case why didn't the mpp go to the high court by the supreme court okay. is mpp suggesting that the high court judges don't understand the law or what oh, i think that i'll take that last one and then okay. let me just go through um what um uh, edu g also sent he says Today, MPP members are saying that Speaker Michael Quay's ruling in November 2020 was wrong. Yeah. They are even saying that Article 9 of their own constitution is wrong. Doesn't it mean double standards and people without principles? Okay. I mean, within the um, context of the okay. law. I've heard that, and I'm going to tie it with what you had just said. I think the argument, whether they remain MPP members or NDC matter for that matter, have already been exhausted. I didn't want to get into it. But with this comment coming and the comment from the Honorable that was just his, tells their, me, their opinion. yes, we want to really go there. I'm not those who subscribe to the opinion that MPP constitution do not prescribe automaticity. That constitution is very clear. Uh, that if you, yes, it stays those where you have just stated. But you have to remember that with constitution, we are not only just using the black letter law. The black letter as is worded. We have to add constitutional conventions. This is why they say constitution has got a what? The spirit and the letters of it. Now, their convention had always been the case that they would sack you, as they've done to the former MP, they expelled him and informed the speaker, especially. But that's not my point. There are three ways, I've always subscribed that, there are three ways in which somebody can leave a party. It's either you resign or you are expelled. Or your conduct or behavior in such a way that it would deem to be incompatible with being membership. And that's where I subscribe to uh, under this particular talk that the speaker, by saying that they are no longer members, he's probably saying that their conduct by filing to, 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 the, to contest, as well as notice of poll being issued by the Electoral Commission, means that their conduct is incompatible. And this is the very reason why the Constitution reserved that to the High Court. Because we then have a problem here. We, we, we want somebody to decide when can we say somebody's conduct is incompatible with being membership. Because, if, if you, again, if you go back to philosophy, there are two theories to it. Some people say that you have to assess their conduct to be more than merely preparatory or the last act. So majority of people will say the last act would be to actually enter the actual election. Others will say that is absurd. Now, so if you don't want to say the, the more than merely preparatory, will these two things constitute it? And this is why the high court would have been the right place for them to do it. And as I say, Professor Mike Way's decision, as far as I am concerned, was a wrong decision. And... This current speaker decision is a wrong decision okay. because it has been reserved to the High Court. And then the way forward, what is the way forward? What do you expect from the Supreme yes. Court? The Supreme Court, I mean, the, the, the Constitution <laughs> has already put in place the measures for the way forward. That if there are impasse, 
we all reserve our judgment and trust it in the Supreme Court to make the decision. The interim orders have been placed. I think the, the, the speaker yesterday abdicated his responsibility. His responsibility was to immediately implement it. His action is more, more or less shutting down the government partially. No. Which is inappropriate. He shut down the, government the, partially, the which is inappropriate. So he should have, uh, he should have, he should have complied with the interim order whilst we expedite the final determination of the matter. But to yeah. shut down everything, waiting for the final determination, especially when we just have less than one month to go for for for, for Parliament to uh, to quit that. again. So so clearly. Yeah. So uh, what's yes. What's, okay, you're done. So, okay. So, so clearly, I expect. Thank you. Uh, as we speak, who sent out or yeah, or hinting to Yabuabia Samoa and Boniface Abu Bakasa are members of the MPP. Is that the case? Was it not the same general secretary of the MPP? Could we have that openly said? Okay, you have by virtue of merely supporting. They are not even contesting an election. Are you a general secretary for the MPP? By by virtue of merely supporting Alan Chamanti, they have been expelled from the party. I mean, you see, Ishak. Yes. Let's be real. Yes. Forget about it. Today, whatever you say yes. was I must stand the test of time. It's not because it does not favor you yes. that you know that it's black and you say it's white. The party itself expelled someone, yes. created a situation of a vacant position only four years ago by the same circumstances. So why are you trying to defend any visible? Your rhetorical questions are too much. You that know, no, no, it is you. No, you are representing the MPP. Uh, okay. What I'm in saying that is, case, in that, so in that you are not case, supposed to ask. I don't know. So, please, please. what I'm saying is that <laughs> we have to be consistent okay. with our dealings. Political parties must take the people of this country very serious. That all that we are looking for is development. I am not interested in who is majority and minority. What is majority and minority when I'm paying e levy? <laughs> You know, lawyer, lawyer Ishak made, made a statement yeah. of fact that there's automaticity. Is that the word oh, yes, you use? Yes, yeah. Automa the constitution says automatic. Automatic. It loses members. It is automatic yes. Mm -hmm. yes. per the constitution of the MPP yes. that you lose your membership straight away yes. if you make that declaration today yes. that you want to contest the next election. But there's a convention attached to it. The convention had always been for them to communicate to you. No, so, no, they never no, communicate. No, nobody, eh? no nobody. Yeah, In fact, as a, as a member of so, the party... So, so, so now... Yes. So, I, you are so, so I, I'm not a member. How so can I, I be when the constitution... So, 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 so you were a former member. So I was asking myself, so let's say... Um, is, it, is it Mr. Asante from Suhum? So, uh, yes. I and Nessitia yes. Morrison? Yes. It is automatic that they would forfeit their membership? Yes. Okay. If that is the case, why then would the caucus... MPP caucus in parliament want to do business with them today when they know that they will be part of meetings, they will be going through issues which will be related to the party that they will be contesting against in their constituency. I can bet you that they only do business they with this for, for convenience and also voting. Serious they, matters they will never discuss with them. Serious matters. Thank you very much. Thank you, very much. Thank you for coming. And exactly. Solo as well. <laughs> and then no also, conviction. and then also uh, Kofi Adams. All of you are big men, so you don't do cash out. Please, do you know cash out? No, okay, yeah, so cash. For me, why do you play, do you play uh, on the same Because platform for me, I'm are, an optimistic. I hope that one day I'll win. Chairman <laughs> Godwin Tamaklo of the Red Group will say, Charlie, we'll keep trying. <laughs> Don't worry, where my hammer come. All right, so cash out goes with the shock who stand 439 hash. But uh, Solo, Loa Shark, as well as uh, Kofi Adan, thank you very much. Uh, but for those who give us a number of the comments, let me say, um, Engineer Samoa, thank you. Thank you for your comments as well today. Um, uh, Landlord Borga D Line. These are unprincipled politicians who only seek self comfort and things that benefit their interests. Ghana has been down to her lowest point ever. Uh, I'll take more of the comments as well. Uh, very important. Um, and then this one also, uh, let me just um, take this one. He says, uh, Prince Henry says, the hypocrisy of the MPP is very expensive. The future is pregnant. Well, I think they are talking law. Oh, law, law but it's law, right? I'm not sure what the future is pregnant they, means. It's it's they, they want to. <laughs> uh, Alfred Kojo Trado says, I pity those law students studying law all the time where they are giving something else in the lecture room 
and then in in the practical sense something else is said and done and then we have other uh, others as well Chrissy Mensah from the United States of America says sometimes I get confused oh yo and then that's what you say that's law all right yes that's law right <laughs> let's do Dewa step into the world so of Dewa 539 <laughs> for your chance to win big <laughs> with Dewa direct and Dewa chop money now with Dewa direct you dial star 446 hash Pick the uh, the numbers range one to thirty nine. Win big twenty times, forty times, four hundred times your your stake and win cash every evening at seven p.m. and also on Sunday at six p.m. Now early early bets they also love they were chop money, money that will be available for you when we have the draws at ten a.m. You dial star four four six hash. You choose the range of the numbers one to thirty nine. You get to win big as well. And you also get to play online. Dewa-nla.com and get to play. Uh, Dr. Carl Domenio, North Carolina, United States of America. Great guy, always watching the show as well. We're grateful. 10, 9, as we wrap up. 8, 7. Let me just read this one. I would do. I would do. Carlio says, let lawyer Ishak know that it can be entirely true that those at the Supreme Court are the best brains. What? Mm. We're taking a break, all right, back. <laughs> <laughs>